So we're recording. Thank you. So we're here, Trusted CI Virtual Institute. Um, today we have Scott Russell presenting on cybersecurity budgeting, I believe. And uh, Vaughn, did you want to say anything before handing it over to Scott? Sure, I'll just introduce Scott quickly. Um, Scott is a, a senior policy analyst here at the IU Center for Applied Cybersecurity Research and works on Trusted CI in a, in a number of different roles on this front. And this is actually some work he did a few years ago on, on cybersecurity budgeting. And so I thought it would make a good perspective on some of the non-technical aspects of cybersecurity when you're thinking about governance and management. And so with that, I'll, I'll quit uh, treading into Scott's presentation and hand it over to him. Welcome, Scott, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, glad to be here. All right, I'm just gonna pull up my slides. Uh, hopefully you all can see them starting now. Awesome. Okay, I've now lost all of your faces, however, which is unfortunate. All right, well, thank you. As Vaughn said, uh, my name is Scott Russell. I am Senior Policy Analyst at uh, CACR. Uh, my background, just to, for a little bit about me, is in law. So I'm not a sort of in the weeds technical person, although I, I went to undergrad for computer science. And, you know, I put that on my resume, but I, I don't use that as much as uh, you know, some other people do. And I'm gonna be talking about cybersecurity budgets today. So just a quick overview of what I'm gonna be talking about. Um, phase one, I'm just gonna kind of go through uh, the research white paper that I worked on about three years ago, I think. Uh, go over like methodology findings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the second part, um, I was able to put in a little bit of effort to try and see what has happened in the uh, subsequent years since we wrote the report. You know, maybe people magically solved the problems, you know, and answered all the uncertainties that we had. And uh, I'll give you some broader thoughts, you know, sort of me pontificating, but I don't always have sources for everything I'm saying at that point. And uh, then I want to give some time at the end for a Q and A. So I'm going to try. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, so on the white paper, uh, just a little background of uh, why we did it. Um, I was actually roped in by my current uh, immediate boss, uh, Craig Jackson, uh, but the motivation was that Trusted CI gives these cybersecurity assessments or engagements as we typically call them. And really common questions that people ask when we're assessing their cybersecurity program, well, I mean, first of all, we often find out that people just aren't spending as much as they probably should be. That's just like across the board, it always seems to be a problem. But when we tell people that, their natural response is gonna be, okay, well, how much should I be spending? You know, And point me to a source that tells me why I should be spending that much. Or in lieu of, you know, the sort of that pure normative, it's like, well, what are other people spending? You know, how am I doing against, you know, the people next door? Because if I'm spending more than everyone else who's comparable, then maybe I think I'm doing okay. Or that's what sort of like the, you know, the higher ups in the organization might think. So part one, we just wanted to like help with those kinds of questions that we're running into. Uh, but we also have this thing, which I think you all have learned about now. Oh, sorry. Uh, called the uh, Trusted CI Framework for Cybersecurity Programs. And um, where, again, I think you, you guys learned about this, but one of the big pillars, you know, there are four pillars, and one of them is resources, which, you know, definitely includes budgets. But we also have two musts. One of them explicitly says you have to have a cybersecurity budget. And the other one says you have to uh, allocate adequate resources for your cybersecurity program. And... Uh, so for a lot of people, you know, this raises those same two questions that I posted above. Again, you know, how much should I be spending? You know, what is adequate? Or give me an idea, you know, something to work with. And what are other people doing? And then finally, there's just a basic research in, you know, interest. You know, we are a center of applied cybersecurity research. Budgets is a big area of research, and we wanted to see how is the research right now. Okay, so what we actually did. Um, this was a lot of me sitting in front of my computer, Google searching, going through the IU library system, just trying to find anything I could that had cybersecurity related words and the word budget. And uh, 
So we found about 50-ish studies, a bit more than that. Um, and then we uh, applied a set of uh, tailoring criteria because a lot of the stuff we found wasn't actually uh, that useful. And so we tried to basically narrow it down to stuff that actually was asking the questions that we wanted and that just adhered to some basic like research rigor. So you had to like publish your methods. Otherwise, I don't want to just see a number. You have to at least give me a little bit of info about why, where you got that number. Uh, we wanted you to track quantitative metrics. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, this is, although it is part of the trusted CI framework, if you just ask someone in a survey, is your budget adequate? And, you know, 60% say no, 40% say yes. It's like, that's not really useful information. And so I wanted something, sorry, Craig Jackson is, is eyeing me through my window. Um, but we wanted information that was quantitative, that was sort of, you know, irrespective of what your organization is doing, you know, just give me a number, something that is, you know, universal. Uh, we also limited it to publicly available studies with the caveat that um, we included the IU library system, which we hoped was an approximation of what, you know, most people could get through with their local library. And the reason I note this is because there's a lot of market research out there that is paywalled and it is really expensive. It's like, you'll, you'll see like Forrester reports. It'll be like, people are spending this shocking number on cybersecurity, like numbers that I really wanted to dig into for $800. And so it's like, you want to spend 800 bucks every single time? And it's not just like one you know, study. There's tons and tons and tons of them. And a lot of them have caveats and they're like sub markets. So we applied all these uh, tailoring criteria. We got down to 11 studies from 50, which is pruning quite a few. So um, uh, what did we find and what did we get rid of? So there's some stuff that just wasn't answering the question that we were asking. You know, there was like market forecasting, which is like saying, how big is the cybersecurity market, which is really targeted at like investors and people who are looking at, you know, these macro trends. Um, I also excluded anything that was a federal government budget. So one of the nice things about government budgets is that they're all public record. And so you can very easily find out how much, you know, any state or any government, at least in the United States, is spending on cybersecurity if they because they might just not have a line item or if they do you know it's it's public it, we're not like getting survey data we can actually see them but the federal government also has like a lot of unique needs and requirements that are not really reflective of what you know most of our audience was probably looking for you know there most people don't have offensive cyber capabilities but our government does also a lot of it's classified so we, we cut out those two things and then the third big category this goes back to the quantitative metrics, is that when you ask people about budgets, the most popular question by far is, are budgets increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? This is like rampant in, when you, when you see these kinds of studies, I'll, I always get excited, and then it's just, you know, increasing, decreasing, staying the same. And as I put in here, I think that information is basically worthless. I mean, the most obvious, it doesn't have a baseline. So it's like increasing from what, decreasing from what, staying, you know, I don't know what that means if I don't know how much you were spending. If you were spending nothing last year and it's increasing to $1, it's like, okay, that's, that's not really the information I wanted. But, you know, conversely, if you were spending, you know, a million, you know, like you're spending a huge amount of money on cybersecurity and you decide to cut it back just a little bit, like that's a decreasing budget. But without knowing the baseline, it's like I have no context for that information. There's also this sort of lies, damn lies in statistics quote that, um, I learned from my dad, but I think it's technically Mark Twain, which I put in there because depending on what you know, metric you are using to track budget, this information can be wildly different. So as you'll see in a second, most of the time when people talk about budgets, they're either talking about budget as a percentage of IT budget. So that's a nice relative metric, or they'll give you like just absolute dollars. Those are the two most common. But if you don't know what they are answering to, you might say, all right, well, my dollar, is my dollar amount increasing or is it relative to IT budget increasing? And those can be very different things. So if like your IT budget goes up, you know, 10% and your cybersecurity budget goes up 5%, that's a relative decrease. So it's as percentage of IT budget, it's decreasing, but in dollar amounts, it's increasing. So all that stuff just gets very confusing very quickly if you don't have the information and it, you know, never provides it.
the one thing that is nice about this is that it's really easy to ask. And year over year, the trend is always increasing. And we'll see that later. Oh yeah, so, and this is, you know, when we, people ask the question, how much did I spend on cybersecurity? The answer that these are often giving is just more. Okay, so some things I mentioned here, cybersecurity as a percentage of IT budget is the most common way of tracking. And you'll see that when I start going into some of the actual studies. But again, there's variation here. Some people will just give dollar amounts. There's occasionally you'll see um, a percentage of total revenues. That's pretty rare. Mostly because those numbers just tend to be very small. If you think IT is generally only like four to 10% total, and then you're taking a 10% of 10%, you know, we're getting into very small numbers at that point. Uh, definitions and boundaries are pretty unclear in this area. This is a common problem in cybersecurity. But one, you know, I've learned very quickly, you can't just type in cybersecurity budget. You have to check in, you know, cyber hyphen security, two words, one word, uh, information security, IT security, network security. There's like a lot of words that people will use. And um, there's no standardization about what they all mean, what they're talking about. And there's this overarching question of, well, what actually is security or cybersecurity? And what is just standard IT good practices? And that's never clear. And it's never really tried to be clarified in the studies. They don't like try and say like, this is cybersecurity and this is not. They kind of just like, they push it out to the community and assume that there's going to be like a normalized response where some people will be over-inclusive, some people will be under-inclusive, and it all just kind of balances out. But that's just a caveat to keep in mind. And the final thing is that this is all surveys. Basically, you know, it's CIO magazine or some information security publication that has like a network will send out surveys and people will respond. But we're never actually looking at their actual budgets. This isn't like SEC data or something where they would actually have it. And then we could actually have a you know, greater sense of reliance on, that, on it. So there's, there's a good chance that people who are answering maybe don't know with you know, particularity what their budget is, so they're kind of guessing. Okay, so actual findings uh, are all over the place. And um, as you'll see, it, it, it's, it's a mess. So the big basic range that we see is, and this is based off of the 11 studies that I mentioned, uh, I would say it ranges between 3% and 12% of IT budget is the, is the range that you know, these studies would find. And what that actually means is that individual studies would find values within this range of the average. So there are studies out there who would say, the average uh, cybersecurity budget is 12% of IT budget, and other people would find 3% of IT budget. Now that, that alone is like a huge difference. You know, that's, you know, four times as much. And then when you dig into the data a little bit more, I would say you probably should expand that even further. And I, you know, I increase it to 2% to 14% because as you'll see, there are other factors that you really have to take into account before you know whether the number you're looking at actually applies to you as opposed to just like a market average. So two big factors that definitely impact how you should think about your cybersecurity budget. Uh, one is your business sector. So it's like if you work in finance, you are almost definitely going to have to spend more on cybersecurity. Or uh, sorry, I should reframe that. The finance sector in general spends more on cybersecurity than the retail sector. Just across the board, everyone seems to find this, you know, exactly how much they are different can vary, but it's always more and always significantly more. The other big one is size. So smaller organizations just tend to spend more on cybersecurity than big ones. And that one, I think, just kind of makes intuitive sense. You know, if, if you're a big organization, you enjoy economies of scale. If you're a small organization, you know, a single IT person might necessarily, I mean, a single cybersecurity person might be 10% of your IT budget, you know, just to, you know, to buy them at all. And so you see a lot of, a lot of that stuff, I think, just kind of makes intuitive sense. And two other factors that there wasn't actually data to support them when I did this research, but I include because they were talked about a lot. One is your geographic region. This one, I think there is new data to support that this actually will play in, you know, a role, particularly because of regulations. So like if you were based in Europe and you have to deal with like GDPR, and there's some information security laws there as well. That's probably just gonna, that's gonna be different. Uh, similarly, if you are in, uh, I think 
they've been finding that in the like uh, Asia Pacific region, companies in general are spending more on cybersecurity. Although I don't have I don't have hard numbers on that, and I haven't again done it in the sort of the rigorous way that we did originally with the original study because that's all new data. Hey Scott, we do have a couple questions if oh. you want to hear them now. Uh, uh, yes. So on the on the survey, well, let me start with the last one. Could you elaborate on who completed the surveys that asked for cybersecurity budgets? And did the literature reveal if they had the knowledge expertise to answer effectively? That's a good question. And the answer is, it depends. This is the classic lawyer answer. So um, it, all, it would depend on who was giving the study and what information they provided. So sometimes they would explicitly say, like, you know, they would give you, you know, when I was uh, doing the selection tailoring criteria, I would look for stuff like, show me the questions you asked in your survey. Like, don't just give me a number. And so I could see the whole survey. And most of the time, people would list a role. You know, it's like, what is your role in the organization would be one of the questions. Um, so we, we have a, some sense. I don't have that tracked. I, I mean, I didn't go through, because the problem is not all of them asked that question. And so I couldn't like standardize for it. And even if they did, not everyone gave the same options. So it's like, you know, some people would say, I'm an IT person or I'm an IT manager, but there's no like, you know, standardized lexicon for what the different roles are in an organization. So it's really hard to compare apples to apples on that. Mm -hmm. The question of whether they had the knowledge or expertise to answer effectively is just an overarching uncertainty. And I think, as you'll see, some of the variability that we find makes me question the validity of some of the survey results just across the board because the variability is kind of crazy but it's a good it's a good point and it's just kind of a caveat you have to keep in mind when looking at all of this stuff okay that, that's great thank you and another question was um did you did you look at these numbers as compared to like the total total it budget of the organizations um, which numbers? I'm sorry. Uh, so the so you, the cybersecurity, you know, three to twelve percent of IT budget. Um, did, did then uh, maybe I can ask the question. It's easier that way. Thank sure. you. So the question is that the three person, twelve percent. You said about who's who, which business sector is higher, which uh, region is higher spending. I assume that you meant the percentage, but the percentage can be could be misleading. Uh, because one organization may be spending a uh, total amount much, much less than the other, but a much higher percentage of that to the IT, uh, to the cybersecurity. Yeah. So elaborate on the total spending and does it affect your, your, the con kind of conclusion you're, you're, you're saying about the region and sectors? Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I'm probably not going to have a satisfactory answer on it because, again, I'm always limited by the questions the survey asked. And most of the time, they would just ask spending as a percentage of IT budget. Sometimes they would include, well, what is your IT budget? You know, are you spending tons on IT or are you barely spending anything on IT? Because that could be distortionary. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's confounding with size because big organizations could spend small amounts on IT and small can spend big. You know, so that's, that's an overarching thing that kind of muddies the water. But um, in general, no, we don't have that data consistently. And so I couldn't like control for it. I think you can logically deduce though that having uh, larger IT budgets means that cybersecurity as a spending, as a percentage of it can, would uh, commensurately go down. So we think that trend would probably still hold true. And it's probably more correct to say it's not size, like uh, organizational size per se, but it is really you know, IT as a percentage of the overall organization. So just to confirm, your, your comment about which sectors spend more, which uh, uh, regions spend more, you're talking about percentage, right? Uh, yeah, well, yes, it's percentage, but it's, um, again, this is another one of those things where it's consistent in however you track budget. So um, when you look at the um, finance, retail, defense, you know, these sort of, I mean, there, there are a bunch of them and they weren't, again, there's, there's an overarching problem of a lack of standardization. But there were some that came through, and so we controlled for those. So it's like if you were in a you know, defense industrial base, you know, aerospace and defense is typically what it would be called. That's one that was ac clear across the board. 
retail was across the board, finance was across the board, you know, there were a couple of them that were like that. And um, we would, if you hold uh, size consistent, then uh, the, the relative amount of spending as a percentage of IT budget would be uh, higher or lower, uh, you know, based, based on what we found. So like retail was always lower, finance was always high, uh, aerospace and defense was always high, but not as high as finance. And all of this is laid out in the paper. Um, and the same thing with like, a, again, geographic region, there, we, there wasn't enough data when I did this research, but there's some more recent stuff that suggested to me that it might be that people are spending more as a percentage of IT budget. So it's, it's not just like, you know, defense and industrial, I mean, defense and aerospace organizations are just bigger overall, so they're spending more. It's, it's the relative, you know, when you control for size that they would still be spending more. Got it, thank you. Um, okay, so I, I've finally managed to find the chat window, and so I can now see the questions. Um, okay, and so the other, uh, before I move on from this, uh, the other factor that might impact budget, but um, which there wasn't enough data, but again, it was talked about a lot, is cybersecurity maturity. And this is kind of a vague concept about, you know, how long have you been doing this, you know, how, you know, it's not totally clear what it means, but it mostly seems to be like, how good are you at cybersecurity with what you've got? And the idea was that basically, if you are setting up a new cybersecurity program from scratch, like you have nothing, there's a lot of upfront costs. There's a lot of like barriers that you have to breach where you just like, everyone has to learn what to do. Whereas if you were like, you've been doing this forever, you probably are running pretty smooth and efficient. And so you can see that if you were more mature, maybe that drives your costs down. The one study that, see, that actually asked this and you know, can, showed data consistently uh, showed the opposite. Basically, it says if you have a mature cybersecurity program, that means you're probably spending more than people who are less mature, holding everything else the same. So cool in theory that maybe if, you know, it's like once you've been doing this for a while, the costs start you know, going down, but it looks like costs just keep going up. It's, Everything inflates. Okay, and then the uh, the other big finding area, which I was alluding to before, is just the enormous variability that we see, you know, just all over this area. So there's uh, between groups uh, variability. So again, if you control, you know, if you so you find like the subset of like small finance organizations, where you would find an average of about fourteen percent of uh, of IT budget versus large retail, which you get down to 2%, you know, really big differences. And, um, and that's just between groups. But then when you go within the same group, and so I'm looking, and so if you basically like you uh, uncollapse the data and you say, all right, well, what is actually the range that people are spending within this group? We see, like, to me, ridiculous numbers, like some that just made me question some of like the overall validity of any of the survey data. Because you would have, again, uh, I listed some of the data down here. It's a little bit hard to parse because um, you have to kind of take the study, how they break it down. So like PricewaterhouseCoopers gave, had a really robust uh, study, but they also didn't use it as a um, percentage of IT budget. So you have to kind of like deduce it. They used everything in just dollar amounts. So they defined large organizations as uh, revenues over a billion dollars. And you find out that 4% of organizations that spend over a billion dollars the revenues over a billion dollars are spending uh, less than 49,000 on cybersecurity, which is incredibly, an incredibly small amount. Whereas you would also find 1% of small organizations, you know, less than $100 million in revenues, were spending 10 million plus. That means 10% of revenues, not of IT budget, that's like an order of magnitude higher than you would expect. So you look at that, those kind of findings, you're just like, well, that doesn't make sense. And then you found this across the board. This wasn't like a, a relic of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Like anyone who gave you granular access to the data, you would, you know, so here we got Ernst & Young and they found um, 39, they defined large organizations differently. It's $10 billion for them, but 39% of them spend under a million dollars. And 24% of very large, 20 billion to 50 billion also spend under a million dollars on cybersecurity. So all of these are just showing that even if you are at the very, very highest amounts, you might be spending nothing or say you're spending nothing. And people who are at the very lowest 
would say they're spending tons. And I mean, I, you take the data for what it's worth, but it does, it makes you just question, you know, it's like, what's going on with this area? It's like, is this sort of like, as someone alluded to earlier, maybe the people who are answering just don't know, you know, you know, it's not, it's, I, it could, it's a very common response to say like, you know, I work for this company, but I don't, I don't work in the finance department. I don't know the budget. And you know, that might just be true across the board here. Um, sorry, I just see new questions. Uh, have you found a breakdown in the distribution of security budgets, example, response time, recovery time, et cetera? Uh, no, not, not in the survey data. You occasionally see um, normative guidance, like you'll have company, you know, like websites or magazine, you know, someone will give guidance that says you should spend, you know, X percent of your cybersecurity budget on incident response, or you should spend, you know, you know 2% of the 10% you spend total on endpoint protection, you know, they'll come up with stuff like that. But that's all, you know, prescript, you know, prescriptive, it's not based on what people are actually doing. Okay, so that's a basic overview of the paper. I've got a link at the end if you want to go read the whole thing. Again, it's a little out of date now, but um, it gives you a, a probably a more high fidelity view of what's going on. So the rest of this um, is kind of my very quick attempt to see what's new, you know, catch up what's happened in the past three years. So first, not much has changed. Uh, you still see tons of this increasing, decreasing guidance. You know, it's an easy question to ask and it's always increasing, which is, you know, that's the main point that people are trying to make is everyone's spending more you better be spending more too without trying to, you know, give people that sort of, you know, actual benchmark that they can try and meet. I'm still not seeing a ton of stuff that's actually tracking budgets quantitatively. I mean, there's a sort of like, there's a standard churn where there are a couple of organizations that do give you decent numbers and they'll give you decent data but there's not a ton of it. Uh, one thing I have noticed, just because uh, state bu budgets are public and so we can actually just like verify them as opposed to ask people what they're spending, is that state budgets have been pretty flat. They've been kind of sitting around 2%. And so uh, the, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's reflective of the entire you know, industry because there does seem to be more spending on cybersecurity, but um, this one example where we have more robust, you know, we have more confidence that the data is correct, hasn't changed much. Uh, but yeah, again, broadly speaking, people do seem to be spending more. It's like when you look at, I mean, if nothing else, the size of the market has definitely increased. Like cybersecurity as a sector has just consistently increased to now it's, I think the number I saw was like 140% bigger than it was 10 years ago. Now, granted, we did the study three years ago. So, you know, three years versus 10, a lot could have happened in those other seven years. And then I look a little bit at um, what were people, uh, what are people like suggesting you should do? Not, you know, what does the data say, but what do just people, you know, smart people suggest? 10% uh, has been bounced around a lot as like a good uh, benchmark to shoot for. I, I mean, I'm not really sure where this number comes from, other than that it's a nice, it's a, you know, a nice round number. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of the range that people have been seeing. And so it's like 3% sounds pretty, mm, but 10%, you know, it's like, okay, that, that sounds like a meaty chunk of your IT budget is going to security. Uh, also, when I have looked at newer ranges, um, the most common I've seen is like in this more nine to 14 range. But again, I'm not, I, I haven't done like an exhaustive review of the new literature. So it might just be that you know, the, the ones with the higher numbers come up quicker in my Google searches or something like that. But uh, it's possible also that just, you know, some of the sort of like the lower people who are spending almost nothing on cybersecurity have been just slowly ramping up. But it, as I put here, it's, it's unclear value just because I, you know, I haven't, tr I haven't been as rigorous as I was back when we originally wrote this. Hey, Scott, a yes. question is, uh, do you know if the spending is mostly on personnel or products and services? Did you see any? Yeah, this is something, well, so I have two points on this, I think. One is um, um, they almost never break down. This goes back to the original point of what is included in cybersecurity. And um, we know from the community survey, which is something that Trusted CI does, where we ask people questions, 
there's no standard as to whether people include personnel or exclude personnel. And that can have a huge impact on these numbers. As a default, I would assume that it includes personnel. I think that'd be the most common reading, except maybe in the most, in the smallest organizations where you might not have like dedicated cybersecurity people at all. You know, it's like 10% of people's time or something like that. But um, it's a good question. And it's one thing that would be really nice to know, but that I have not seen broken down anywhere is how much it's sort of like, there's one is how much should I spend on people? But another is just how many people do I need for a given cybersecurity budget size? Like that's data I would love to see because I think it's, it answers another big question people have, but I, I just never see that. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll get to cyber, cyber insurance in a second. So um, I'm just marking a couple of things here that are potentially, that have potentially changed in sort of the past three years. So one is there's, you know, been an, a proliferation of third party services, you know, these sort of like security as a service, software as a service, anything where you kind of like, as you push more of your IT responsibilities to like Amazon or to some cloud provider, that can also push down your relative cybersecurity spending, or it could also mask it because everything is now just lumped under IT and cybersecurity is something that, you know, this third party does for me. We haven't gotten to the point where people are just completely outsourcing IT to other organizations for the most part, but because of that trend, it it's potentially has a downward pressure on what people are spending. And then cyber insurance is, I just put it as a wild card because people have been talking about cyber insurance for a while now. And they keep hoping that, you know, these, these actuaries will come in with their, you know, their spreadsheets and they're just going to figure it all out. Uh, doesn't seem to have happened, but it does play a role, particularly for like smaller organizations who might just say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a cyber insurance policy and I'm just going to roll the dice. Uh, there, there's some, there's some weirdness with cyber insurance because what all it covers, it, it's normally not like, you know, full spectrum cyber risk mitigation. It's often a little bit more narrow than that. So some will be like nation state attacks are not covered, which is kind of like, mm. You know, how do we really, do we know if it's a nation state or not? And, you know, nation states attack a lot of people these days. And also a lot of times there's just a cap where it's like, uh, it can't go higher than hundred million in liability. And if you're a big organization, that's, that's not good enough. So, uh, but again, my, my, inf like I, I knew more about this or I was more up to date on it like two years ago. So stuff could be changing there as well. So I put it as a wild card. And the final point is just that um, regulations have been kind of ramping up all over the place. You know, in here in the U.S., CUI is becoming a big deal, and that basic that is probably driving up cybersecurity spending for anyone who has to deal with that. Uh, you know, in China, there's been a big cybersecurity law that came out in the past, or it's being ramped up in the past two years. And the GDPR, which has cybersecurity adjacent effects, is probably pushing some of those costs up as well. Okay, and um, so these are some big picture thoughts. Uh, this is just me kind of pontificating, and then I'll open up to questions. So one is like, how should I think about benchmarking? And as I've said, I don't have a ton of faith in uh, you know the veracity of all this data. So I kind of view it as like, all right, this is like setting boundaries. This is like, all right, we've got like a lower bound and an upper bound. And if I'm in that kind of range, you can sort of say, okay, I mean, like I'm, I'm in the benchmark. I don't need to worry that I'm like, I'm way out of bounds. And if I do get out of those boundaries, then I need like a heightened scrutiny to answer like, well, okay, well, why am I spending more? Why am I spending less? And there might still be a good reason. You might say this is still justified, but that's kind of the role is that, you know, it's, it's good information, but it's not like binding. It's not like you cannot go outside of these numbers. I also note that maybe like I don't have this, but you might want to remove some of those outlier data points that I was talking about because some people are saying they're spending nothing. Some people are like spending all of their money on cybersecurity, it seems like. And uh, really trying to find the sector and size specific data so that you're not comparing, you know, not the small finance firm comparing yourself to retail and saying, oh, we're doing great. You know, we can spend a ton less when, you know, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. Also, some of this is like, 
you're going to be in an organization who probably doesn't want to spend a ton of money on cybersecurity. And so understanding sort of your organizational risk tolerance and the culture is important because that kind of will govern how you approach a lot of this stuff. So my sense is that a lot of organizations are much more reactive and incrementalist when it comes to cybersecurity spending. So they don't want to, you know, get ahead of it. And, you know, they're going to like, once we get, you know, breached, then we spend more but probably not a ton more. We, we, you know, we get breached and then we like, all right, we up our game a little bit. And so they're, they're always kind of behind the curve. And so there may be a little bit more risk tolerance or they just have a culture of not wanting to change. But there are some times when you see people who are like, no, we're going to get ahead of this. We're going to make big changes. We're going to like make cybersecurity a selling point. And so understanding those things will probably govern like where you probably fall in the bounds of the benchmarking data, you know, whether you're aiming for the lower bound or the upper bound. And the other stuff that I put here is, um, I mean, if you've actually been targeted by, you know, if you know that there's like people who are after your stuff, then that is going to drive your costs up just always, you know, and one potential threat here is just regulations, right? If you, if you are having to comply with CUI, this is going to, it's going to bring your costs up and there's no getting around that. Um, I'm going to skip over the metrics stuff, but I mean, well, basically every organization has this problem where they want to see ROI on security investments. And we have not been good at quantifying, you know, what, what our security practices actually do. And so the benchmarking data is kind of a nice, um, it's like a nice alternate path because rather than say like, if we implement two factor, that'll save us this X many dollars, which is really just hard to you know, quantify. We can say, well, we don't know but we know that we're spending in the appropriate amount and within the amounts that we're spending, we're, you know, we're making good decisions. Oh yeah, and then final points. Um, just the role of breaches, uh, this is, should be, I think everyone kind of gets this, but um, adequate security does not mean that you are never going to be breached and inadequate security does not mean I've had breaches. Like that, that's not the way you test whether or not you're spending enough. Uh, you know, because you can be, have a really good cybersecurity program, but you get targeted by someone who's just way out of your league and you just say, well, we couldn't, you know, it wouldn't make sense economically or for a mission to, um, to try to prevent that. And then also, uh, this is going to one of the questions that we, was asked earlier, but, you know, really trying to break down what you're spending your money on, because a problem that we see a lot is that people will buy like security toys without realizing that they have no one who can use them. So, you know, you got this cool network log analyzer, but it requires an FTE with like specialized training to run. And, you know, they don't have the FTE. So they're spending a lot of money on cybersecurity, but they're probably, they're getting less than, you know, less than nothing almost, you know, because they're spending, but they're not getting anything. And um, yeah, I mentioned security as a service again. Oh, and, and I've, I've done this in other talks where I just like to, you know, basic strategies you can think about, you know, are you the Fort Knox type person where it's like, we, you know, we're, we're very risk intolerant. We want to be the security, you know, the really strong ones. Or are you the gambler where you might say, or we're going to go for the minimum amount and maybe we'll like get some insurance to cover the rest of it. Or are you trying to find that, uh, that Goldilocks approach? And I think, yeah, that's it. So I am happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Scott. There are a couple of questions that just popped up in the chat box. Um, let's see. One is studies from, uh-oh, Honeman, IBM, Accenture, et cetera, have done surveys to determine the cost of cybercrime, downtime costs, recovery costs, et cetera. Have you seen any relationships between these cost numbers and the budget numbers? Does the former inform the latter in the open literature? That's a mouthful. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, the short answer is no. So most of the time, if you have a, if I'm looking at something that is talking about, once, once I applied all of the tailoring criteria that we listed, we basically just got a, a budget number that like stood up to the standards that we were applying. There wasn't a whole lot of like cross-referencing. Uh, you could sort of um, intuit that uh, if you are in an industry where cybercrime has higher costs on you, that that's going to drive your spending up. So, um, 
you might say the cost of cybercrime for like aerospace and defense is naturally high because there's like a lot of uh, trade secret theft in that area. And trade secret theft is, you know, it, you know, typically viewed as a, you know, it's a high cost crime for those industries. And so it drives costs up. Same with finance, where the cost of um, cybercrime and finance is potentially really big because it's got all of our money. And uh, so it would make sense that, um, that those costs might be the underlying driver for the industries, so, you know, some, some correlation between that and regulation. But even then you would assume regulation is probably a surrogate for the cost of cybercrime, where it's like we're regulating areas where people who have really high impact, potential impacts from not doing cybersecurity, we're just gonna force them to do more cybersecurity. So I think it would make sense that those are, that is driving it. But I haven't seen explicit relations between the two. Thank you. Um, there's one more. Uh, can you elaborate more about reactive versus proactive and also incremental versus revolutionary? Yeah, this was, this was me more characterizing uh, my sort of like the extremes of how organizations just tend to approach cybersecurity. So the idea of reactive versus proactive was just that there are some organizations who just won't change until they get kind of hurt or hit with something. So it's the classic, you know, they had terrible cybersecurity until they had a really big breach and they got kind of like publicly shamed. And then they finally, they got a CISO and then they started investing in some. And my sense, there's a lot of organizations that seem like this, particularly if you're not in sort of like the tech sector where you may be like you're, you know, just have like a cultural better affinity with cybersecurity. You, so you see in like retail a lot where it's, you know, people just, they're doing nothing and then they get hit. And so, okay, we'll do a little bit more. The proactive idea is just that there are some people who are, they kind of come into the world aware that cybersecurity is a threat that they need to be on top of. And, they, uh, and they, they try and preempt all the stuff. So like we want to have the good security before we get hit rather than waiting until after. So that was the distinction I was trying to make there. And all this was supposed to be that when, if you are like in a position where you are trying to advocate for a bigger budget, understanding what kind of culture you're dealing with is probably going to be important. Now, I don't have like great strategies. If you are in the, if you are in an organization who just does not want to spend more on cybersecurity and the only way to get them to spend more is to be breached, that's, you know, you can like maybe convince them to do a red team or something like that to kind of like scare them into spending more. But other than that, you know, it might just be, you got to know what you're, what you're operating in. So, so a follow up on that question, uh, in, I didn't see that in your uh, report uh, for 2016 or the most recent, 20, so the two references you had uh, on these two points, do you see a percentage on proactive, percentage on revolutionary on the rise, or do you see that stay flat? Uh, I know that your point about culture, knowing the culture to argue for the spending, but my question is more on do you see any trends um, that do you see uh, any people reporting or predicting things like that or vice versa that they're not they're going down? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have no data on any of this. This, this is me characterizing what I've seen. Um, there are, it'd be really hard to sort of quantify, are you reactive or proactive? Uh, you occasionally see stuff where, you know, case studies where you have people who were spending way too little and maybe they were even, they were made aware of the threats and they still were spending too little. And uh, then they get hit and then they start spending more. That, that's, you know, it's, a, it's a common trope in uh, the field. As for like my sense of the relative percentage of the two, I really, I can't say on that. I mean, I would like to think that people as cybersecurity has become more of like a, you know, it's, it's more on the front page of people's sense of issues that you're getting more and more people who are being proactive, but I have, I have no data to support that. It, it could be it could be the opposite that you know people think you know as they're kind of relying more on third parties that they think this is even less my job you know or it could be that you know they they got over a hurdle and they were like all right fine we'll implement two factor for our like privileged accounts and then once they do that they go back down to and now we're doing nothing because two factor is great it solves all of our problems or something like that so I could only, I could really only guess at that point and it would be a wild guess probably. And, and it's the same with the sort of like incrementalist versus revolutionary. I would guess people are still mostly incrementalist. That's just kind of, 
when you talk to you know, finance people and like C-suite people are always going to be making the big calls about how much to spend in sort of macro sense in a company. And it's just pretty rare that you see people who are just like, you know what, we're just going to spend a ton of money without knowing really clearly how it's going to give them that you know, return on investment. And if they were, I would guess it's because they're really going to try to market it as such. Like we are the security, like that security is a selling point for us. But again, this is all me speculating. I don't have like insight into, you know, C-suite, you know, closed door conversations about how much should we really spend on cybersecurity. Uh, okay, I see another question about uh, metrics and ROI. Has there been any data or knowledge we can extract based on security vendors' revenue over time? Um, I'm not sure I totally follow that question. So uh, there, there are two questions, right? So uh, you, you mentioned about metrics problem. So I can see that you already alluded to it about return on investment. Right, so how people assess, I want to purchase this solution, this product, this service, um, how much uh, return would I get in two years, three years? Uh, why people do anything like that or not? All right, first question on that. And second of all, I'm thinking about, you have so alluded a lot on, this is gonna be very difficult to get real data, right? To get a closed room. So I'm curious whether there's any reporting there from the financial side, from the security vendors, right? There are a lot of small and big companies providing those, their revenues. They, are, they need to report those revenues. So I was wondering whether there's anything that can be studied based on the revenues of big or small security vendors on, on that. I mean, this is not personnel, this is more product solutions. People done anything like that and kind of can give us insights. Yeah, I don't have uh, I don't have any specific insights on those. They're all very good points, though. I think that's um, that's it's a really good uh, potential follow up area. Um, if you, we're probably going to run into problems where the uh, I mean, so we know that there has been just an increase over time, just like a consistent increase in people selling security stuff. You know, so all these security vendors the market as has uh, broadly increased you could maybe sort of like tamp down within those and be like what are the specific types of vendors who are really doing well and which ones are not doing well and maybe like infer from that that okay so these are the types of services that people view as giving them high roi i mean it's, it's a good point uh i don't i just don't have you know any, any particular knowledge on that um yeah, sorry, sorry, I can't be more help there. All right, sorry, I see another question. Um, which areas do you see more survey work being done? Costs versus risks versus insurance versus budgets? I have found most on the costs, but I haven't delved in as deep as you. Could you comment on where more work needs to be done and why? Okay, so um, as for uh, where more survey work needs to be done. I mean, again, the, the research that I did was, you know, it was motivated kind of externally for me where someone said, you know, we're really interested in uh, looking at budgets specifically. And so I really focused my efforts on budgets and any, um, any stuff on like risks or insurance or costs broadly construed. Um, I, I picked up sort of incidentally, but it wasn't the focus of it. And so I can't say, you know, with any certainty that like, this is the one that we need more of versus this is the one that we need less of. Um, I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier though, one area where I would like more information is about personnel spending. So if, rather than just looking purely at IT budget, finding out how much people are spending on uh, cybersecurity, I mean, it, sorry, instead of looking at just cybersecurity budget as a percentage of IT budget, looking at, you know, cybersecurity personnel as a percentage of IT or even of, of IT personnel, you know, it's like how many FTEs does it take to do to run X, and how many FTEs does it to run Y, and so getting a better sense of um, how basically people spending is broken down. And um, now the one caveat to all of this, this, this goes across the board, is that whenever we're looking at survey, this is just what people are doing. It's not what is the best way to do things. So there's a world where you might say, you know, what survey data is interesting because, I mean, if I'm doing better than my peers, that, that looks nice if I'm like in a litigation thing. You know, someone's trying to sue me for having inadequate security and I can say I'm doing better than 50% of the people out there. That's, that's always nice. But um, 
it doesn't actually mean that they're doing it well. It just means that they're doing it. So you might, I mean, another way to look at things is to focus on case studies where you might say, okay, here's a company that's doing cybersecurity really well and look at all the stuff that they're doing that's making it do really well. So, you know, I've heard Netflix use as this example um, where you could say, all right, so Netflix is spending X amount on security and they've got this number of FTEs and this is how they really prioritize their, their costs. Uh, now that, that's not always going to be useful because you will probably want to be more industry and size specific. So it's like if you're, you know, a small research shop and you're comparing yourself to a major like streaming platform, it's like the needs are just completely different. So how they allocate the resources is not going to be useful and maybe their strategies don't make sense for you. But if you can find really successful people in your field and then kind of figure out what they're doing, that, that can also be a, a useful way to look at things. And um, as for the next question, um, who are the people who are doing these studies? Um, as the people who are actually running the studies, there's kind of a mix. So you see the big accounting firms. So this is the PricewaterhouseCoopers and the Ernst and Youngs, those, those kind of ones. They almost all have cybersecurity shops within them. And uh, they're the ones who put out the best studies that I've seen. Uh, you also see some that are sort of funded by, they're like indirectly funded by IT fund, uh, companies. So like Dell, so Ponemon, which was mentioned earlier, uh, is just like the research wing of Dell, basically. It has a separate name, but it's always Ponemon slash, or like IBM, or one, sorry. I'm, I'm, prob I'm mixing up who all these companies are, but there are some of them that are just funded kind of by the industry. Uh, and then you also see some where they're like uh, specifically in market research. So this is the Gartners, this is the, uh, the Foresters. Again, some of those are paywalled, like Forrester is always frustrating to me because all of their stuff is paywalled and they always have much, much higher numbers than anything else I see. Gartner stuff is paywalled too, but I had access to some of it. So I was able to, I found like one good study that I was able to use because I got it through the library system. But, you know, like Gartner would say, like, uh, everyone, the average is 7%. You know, they're, they're not giving the range. They're just giving you the absolute middle. And um, whereas Forrester would be like 20%. And I mean, that's a huge difference. And I'm like, well, how did they get 20%? That's, that's such a big difference. And then I can't see anything about it. And so, but that, those uh, types of uh, organizations. And then the final one you would see sometimes like uh, information security specific publications would look at this stuff. So uh, like C uh, CIO Magazine, I think will do surveys occasionally. Uh, there's some just like big websites that focus on sort of techie stuff and they'll put out surveys and sometimes you'll get, you know, sometimes you'll get like surprisingly kind of like niche sources that will have decent methods and they'll actually publish everything they got. And uh, so those would be included. But that's kind of the range. All right, we have uh, three minutes left. So any quick last questions? Everyone is saying thanks. And I thank you myself. This has been very, very interesting. Um, and a lot of food for thought for future activities. Uh, thanks. <laughs> any, any other last words, Vaughn? No, thank you, Scott. Yep, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. And Sorry I couldn't just give you like a simple spend this much and be done. Yeah. Everything's more complicated than you want it to be. Well, and then do what with that money, right? Yeah. <laughs> thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you.